So what an honor and actually humbled to be here today. You know, I grew up in uh, Barranquilla, Colombia, and if it wasn't for a couple of teachers, I wouldn't be here in North Carolina. I had a couple of teachers that were teaching me in uh, junior and senior that were graduates from Western Carolina University. Do we have any happy to see you graduates here? Oh, that may, there you go, got a few. Well, so I ended up coming to the mountains of North Carolina, and then I transferred to NC State, where I got a degree in civil engineering, a master's in structural engineering. And 20 years ago, I founded Stewart. Stewart Engineering, now Stewart Inc., which is right across the street with an office in Charlotte and an office in Durham, soon to have an office in Richmond, Virginia. And we've been privileged and honored to work in projects like the Hunt Library with the instructional engineers for that project, as well as Terminal 2 at the airport. So what are we doing at Stewart? We have, you know, knowing that to be the best, we've got to have the best. We have a rigorous process for recruiting. We have a three uh, interview process, which is a, a screening interview, a comprehensive interview, and a commitment interview. And I won't bore you with all the details with that. But the important thing there is that before we take anybody through, we have them take a behavioral assessment, sort of like a psychometric assessment. It, the one we use is called the AVA. There are many out there. There's a DISC, Myers-Briggs. And what that is doing is telling us, you know, the natural behavioral tendencies of this individual you know, and we want to make sure that it matches the behavioral requirements of the job. Basically, that we have the right person in the right job. But it also teaches us about that individual, how that person gets motivated, its strengths and weaknesses, and how they want to be managed. Because see, we believe in the platinum rule, which says, you know, treat others as they would like for you to treat them. Right? So we want to manage people that way. So understanding behavior is absolutely key to be able to develop our talent. So once we bring them into a very comprehensive orientation process, we put them into a one-on-one -on -one, uh, monthly program, which you know, they take them all the way through, always. If you manage somebody at Stewart, you are required to do one, monthly one-on-ones with that individual. You're talking there about key performance indicators. You're talking there about uh, performance in general, but more important, you also talk about monthly goals. So each person has personal and professional goals, both. And therefore, when you're done with your monthly meeting, you should have another set of goals for the next 30 days. Then we have intentional training. If you're an engineer in the state of North Carolina, you've got to have 15 PDH hours. But in addition, you know, that's of, that, that sort of supports your, your, your technical expertise. But in addition to that, we do a lot of soft training, soft skills training. We teach them about behavior, you know, how people learn, emotional intelligence. I think Amanda earlier this morning actually mentioned all those words. We teach them how people are motivated, team building. All those things are, are highly important. Then we have Stewart University. Stewart University, we've been doing it for the last several years. We actually have an internal dean, Frank Mundy, who leads our geomatics group. And, and this is every Wednesday we have a class. And this year, we're focused on cross-discipline training. We're basically teaching our engineers what our landscape architects are doing, our landscape architects, what our construction services people are doing. What we're doing is creating a more whole individual. Because at the end of the day, what we're looking for is, frankly, people to get empowered. And because empowerment leads to motivation. And I'm not going to go talk a lot about that because I know that Dan Pink is going to be presenting on that probably at lunchtime today. But empowered individuals get really passionate about what they do. They're self-directed. They're autonomous. And self-direction leads to emotional engagement. See, when you're emotionally engaged with your job, you also get emotionally engaged with your team members. You become part of high-performing teams. And most important, you get emotionally engaged with your company. Because you see, survey after survey has clearly shown that emotionally engaged people are more hyper-focused, are more energized about what they do. And the Tower Watson global study and the, uh, the Gallup surveys clearly show that companies with highly engaged employees are outperforming those that are not. In fact, by numbers in the 20, 30, and 40 percent in productivity, profitability, customer service, morale, lower turnover, and even lower safety incidents and product defect. 
So all that leads to enhanced outcomes. See, and this enhanced outcomes, these enhanced outcomes, then with a leadership that truly believe that this is important. You see, I have and work with some CEOs that will not mind spending a million dollars in a piece of equipment, but then cringe at the thought of sending their people to training. But, you know, this leadership needs to understand that it's important. They believe in work-life balance. They believe in reinvesting back into the culture of the organization. They believe in wellness programs, well-being programs. They believe in um, compensation and bonuses and all that good stuff. Because you see, what we're looking at here is trying to create a great place to work. That's our vision at Stewart. You know, become one of the best places to work. Because see what happens when you do that. Then you don't have to participate in the recruiting war. Because people truly, the best talent are out there, get attracted to those companies. And right here, we have SAS in Cary, second best place to work in the United States. We have DPR Construction has a branch office right here in Cary, in, uh, in Morrisville, 10th best place to work in the, in, the, so we, you know, in, the, in the United States. So we have those companies here, right? So what I have here in front of you is what I call the integrative management model. Within that model, I call it the success virtual cycle. See, when you invest in culture, what you're doing, you're attracting the best talent. You put them through the same process, right? You train them, you develop them, they get engaged and they get, they get empowered, they get engaged and make the company even a better place. So here in North Carolina, we have an opportunity to do that. Because at the end, what we need to have here is the place, the best state to work. And I have two seconds, so I leave you with a poem that uh, John Wooden, rest in peace, was his favorite poem. I suspect a lot of you will know it. Back from the 1930s and 80 years later, it's still relevant. He says, not a written word nor a spoken plea can teach our kids what they should be, nor all the books in all the shelves. It's what the teachers are themselves. Thank you.